Good afternoon and hello. Today is June 29th and I welcome you to today's Chat and Chew and I am Sandra, your RDN, where I dish out the weekly dose of your nutrition and wellness news for the mind, the body, and the soul. I hope everybody's having a wonderful and blessed day. It is a beautiful yet hot Tuesday afternoon in Orlando, Florida. So those who are joining me live, I thank you, as I always do, for joining me live. And those who listen to the replay, I thank you for taking time out of your schedule to join me and just to you know, get a little bit of nutrition news to help to better each and every one of us. And so as I see people logging in, please feel free to tune in and tell me your name, where you're, where you're tuning in from, and you know, let me know what the weather is and how you're doing today. And so today, um, it's about holidays. So holidays are about celebrating, you know, they're meant to be enjoyed, right? But you don't have to sacrifice your health goals, your weight goals, um, every time you attend either a barbecue or a party or an event or anything like that. And so today we're going to talk about six barbecue survival tips that can save you hundreds of calories that you won't even miss and keep your health and your fitness goals on track. So a quick introduction of myself. My name is Sandra Goltry, and I am a registered dietitian nutritionist. And my mission is to simply show people how to get food to work for you instead of thinking that food is the enemy. I take joy in adding a variety of different foods to a client's short list of foods that they're already eating so that they lose weight, that they keep the weight off, most importantly, and to boost their energy levels. And even more important than all of that, you want to feel great about yourself without feeling deprived and without deprivation. So, or without feel, you know, feeling like you're on a diet. Simple as that, plain and simple. And so today I am wrapping up this series on the summertime madness, how the madness of the summertime, usually it derails our structure that we have, our routine and food choices, and ultimately our weight. And so this is, um, this is Fourth of July weekend, right? And so with that comes a lot of food, a lot of drinks, family, fellowship, and fun. And so we are going to talk about six tips for not regretting your 4th of July barbecue, all right? So today's live is fun, is short, and is to the point. So I appreciate each and every one of you joining me live. Give me a few minutes because one of the things that I would like to do is I would like to get my window set up so that I can see who is on and, is to and that I can respond. Is, I like to get my window there we go. So, and I can respond to you <laughs> if you make comments to me. So I love things um, to have interaction. I love having interaction. So I usually will post little me. questions and little nuggets. So please feel free to chime in and engage. So it makes things more fun. All right. So my first question, I always have my icebreaker here. My first question is, have you ever overdone it? at a 4th of July barbecue or weekend. Sometimes it's a whole weekend of events. It's not just a day. So let me know if you've ever done it, overdone it. Like you either over ate, you over drank, you did both. <laughs> I'm sure at one point we all have been there. So just kind of chime in if you ever felt like you just overdid it on the 4th of July um, holiday. <clears throat> all right, so let's jump in. We're going to talk about um, six tips. And so the first two tips for not regretting your holiday barbecue. Number one, use small plates, all right? So most of us, including myself, okay, we frown. We frown when we see those little tiny plates at the end of the buffet line, right? <laughs> we're like, you know, what are we going to do with those small plates, right? But research shows that people um, who use smaller plates um, use, and they, use, they usually eat less, okay, without even noticing it. And so remember, the food at the barbecue is usually higher in fat, it's usually higher in sodium, it's usually lower in fiber and nutrients that really fuel our body. So the difference is substantial. So as much as 50% fewer calories is usually consumed, yet everyone reports having the same level of fullness and satisfaction. So that's what some, that's what research is saying. So kind of interesting, huh? And a lot of that has to do with, I think, because they're interacting and they're engaging and they're talking. So try borrowing a plate from the kids' table or from the dessert tray to kind of lighten up on the plate, okay? Because what we tend to do, we get the big plates and then we fill the big plate up and then we pile it up. So that's usually how we get ourselves in trouble. So number two, 
Number two. Oop, but I see some comments. Let's see here. Who we? Yep. Okay. Absolutely. So Chris is chiming in today. How you doing today? And so she is admitting that she overdoes it at the Fourth of July weekend, as we all do. <laughs> We're all guilty of it at some point or another. So number two, eat slowly and mindfully, okay? So people who eat slower, we eat. they tend to eat fewer calories over the course of the meal. So barbecues are a perfect opportunity to pace yourself because you have an opportunity to talk, to mix, to mingle with friends, to do activities, especially if it's like a family reunion type, type deal. So, but hint, the more you talk, the more you're chatting, the less you're eating. So that's something to think about. So my question to you is, do you go back for seconds? Yes or no? Do you go back for seconds? So this is probably one of the top culprits that lead us to regret <laughs> the 4th of July event, the party, wherever we're at the next day. So remember, we got this big plate, we filled it up end to end, and, and we piled it up. If it's a barbecue, we pile it up too. And then we go back for seconds. Okay. So that usually is what kind of has us wanting to unbutton our pants. So let me know, yes or no, if you are guilty of going back for seconds. Let's see here. No. Well, oh, okay. We got a no here. We'll see if anybody else chimes in with the with the yes. The um okay, got a, got a couple other people saying no. Well, that's good. No seconds for me. Got several no's. Okay, good. It took me a while to get there. So I'll admit I used to go back for seconds a lot, but I, I learned. I learned. I'd rather have a little bit of everything. So I've kind of learned. I want a little bit of everything, so I won't overindulge too much in one thing. But I'm impressed. We got a lot of no's here, so that's all right. <laughs> all right, so let's go into our oh, I see some more comments coming in. Let's see here. I definitely want to, to see these, see if anybody, it's it's not easy. <laughs> okay, so we're, we're getting closer to a yes. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so at least we're not a, a, a resounding no. So that's good. We got some people who, who, who are with me that have, have been there. So eat the healthiest foods first. And we're going to go into our next set of twos. So number three, eat the healthiest food first. So if you're eating slow, you're eating on small plates, so why not fill up on some of the healthy stuff first? So let's talk about salads, okay? This is going to be a fun one. Let's talk about salads. So they're a great start. They're watery. They're, they slow down digestion, you know, fiber. They have few calories. But I hear this often, and I see this often. I didn't come here to eat salad. I didn't come here to eat vegetables. <laughs> I want the real stuff. So they're going for the mac and cheese or going for the baked beans, the ribs. So salads are usually skipped. And usually the salad is the first thing. You have your, your, your cups, your plates, everything. And then it's the salad. I watch people walk right past the salad and go to the other stuff. So um, think about that. So eat well-rounded. And then, you know, you're still going to have the good stuff too. So... <laughs> So kind of post if you uh, if you skip the salad when it's there. So let's see if anybody's going to admit to skipping the salad. <laughs> I don't have a banner for that. I just kind of wanted to take a poll if anybody walks past the salad, the salad um, area. So number four, skip the chips, the crackers, the bread. OK, so the reason for this, refined carbs. So let's think about refined carbs. They are abs they're actually the worst things that you can eat because they offer very little satisfaction for the body itself but it makes our flesh feel good and it tastes good and things like that. So it satisfies, you know, our flesh, but our body really doesn't need it. It's loaded with calories and it leads to dangerously um, high insulin spikes. So those are some of the, you know, side effects. Um, barbecues are usually filled with great food. So you save yourself, um, so you do yourself a favor, save your calories for the really, really good stuff. So when you do indulge and you do indulge in that refined stuff, be selective. Chips is something you can get anywhere. Crackers, that's something you can get anywhere. So why have it at the barbecue? So save it for things that you know somebody made, it's homemade, it's, it's something you're not going to get probably for another year. Um, but that doesn't mean you have to go bunless. Uh, on your burger, or you have to do a, a lettuce wrap on your burger. Um, but we're talking about, you know, like I said, the chips, the crackers, and some of the snack foods and things that you can get anytime, any place, anywhere. Okay. So I would like to hear, let me see, I see some comments. I see some comments. 
Absolutely. Um, I usually conveniently don't see. <laughs> I know that's right. Don't see the salad. Okay. Hey, Robin. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for that honesty. Conveniently don't see the salad. See, that's, and I see it all the time and it's hilarious. So people are very, very vocal in saying, oh, psh, I ain't come here for salad. <laughs> so that's the last thing they are trying to eat. So name your favorites. I would love to hear, what are your barbecue favorites? Um, just kind of blurt out the first thing that comes to your mind. So don't, don't overthink it. Um, one of mine was potato salad, you know, but everybody can't make good potato salad. But, um, when I come across somebody who makes some good potato salad, I enjoy having that homemade again. Now store-bought, mm -mm. <laughs> I prefer to have it homemade and I'll take that indulgence. I do love to have grilled, um, corn on the cob. So those are, that's something that I do love to have too. So I would love to hear some of your barbecue favorites. And so while those are posting, I'm going to keep it rolling, keep it rolling and go to our final set of, um, of two tips, which is number five, keep the desserts small. Okay. So the difference between a large slice of cake, a smaller slice of cake can, it can add up to like hundreds of calories. Okay. So, and to reiterate the sugar, the refined carbs, things like that. And the most, um, and the most dangerous foods, right, in terms of insulin spikes, in terms of lack of nourishment for our bodies, but it's good for our flesh. I mean, we, we can't ignore that. And I don't ignore it either. But it, it but it also triggers cravings. So usually when we get on that bandwagon, it's, it's hard to get off of it. And so that said, you don't have to pass on the desserts. You don't have to skip it. But keep your portions in check. Keep your portions in check. All right. And that's another reason to not go back for seconds, because think about it. You have your meal. You know, there's some there, there's a dessert table someplace. Um, you, you, most people want to indulge in a drink. So you kind of have a, a little bit of everything. So that's kind of how I like to think about it. Let me see here. I see a few more comments. Mac and cheese, baked beans. I see some baked beans. Let's see if I can see some names. OK, see potato salad, mac and cheese, seafood. Uh-huh. Seafood salad. Oh, yeah, that's a good one, too. Mac and cheese. Uh-huh. Baked beans. All right. Everybody's on bandwagon with the baked beans and the mac and cheese. Yes. I am with you. I love some good homemade mac and cheese, and I will take the sodium hit, the blood pressure spike. I'll take it all if the macaroni and cheese is good <laughs> and homemade, right? So the last one, the last one I have here is think before you drink, okay? So there is a place for alcohol in a healthy lifestyle. So don't think that you have to just completely cut it out. So smart choices can make a difference between losing weight, gaining weight, and of course, you know, your self-control. But think about this. Uh, so a sugary mixed drink may have as much as 600 to 800 calories. So a lot of people think it's okay to drink your calories, but in some cases it's, it's worse than eating your calories. So, and for some people, think about 800 calories. For some people having two of those 800 calorie drinks, that's more calories than they need in a day. And you haven't eaten anything. So of course, you're going to eat food too while you're at the barbecue. So that's how quickly the calories can add up. So you have to ask yourself, is it really, is it really worth it? And that's usually when we have those regrets the next day. So stick to wine, stick to beer, stick to single liquor um, if you're going to do the, the liquor and have plenty of water and pace yourself. Okay. Pace yourself, pace yourself, pace yourself. <laughs> and so my question for you is what, what do you find yourself indulging in most? Is it the and I, I don't have food on here, so let's so let's add food, the desserts, the drinks, or all of it. So is it the food that you overindulge in, the desserts, the drinks, or all of it? So where do you find yourself um, indulging more with? Um, and it can, and it's not just Fourth of July. Any event, any party, any gathering that's outside of your home. So where do you find yourself indulging the most in? So while those comments are coming in. Um, I'm going to wrap things up. So these little small tricks can save you hundreds of, in some cases, even thousands of potential wasted calories, because trust me, it adds up fast. Um, that nine times out of 10, you won't miss. You won't even notice. So, and then you'll, and you'll like yourself the next day. <laughs> you won't feel bloated. You won't feel sick. You won't feel some kind of way. And so let me see if there are any comments about, yes, I do see some comments. So food and the drink. Okay. So we had um, some people chiming in with food and the drinks that they overindulge in. And like I said, most people, if you're at a party long enough, in most cases, we're overindulging in all of it. And it doesn't have to uh, be alcoholic drinks too. It can 
they can be non-alcoholic drinks. So they're just, they, they have a high calorie, high sugar content as well. So if you would like to get a jump start on some clean eating before the fourth kind of, you know, healthy, natural detox, if you want to call it, <laughs> I have got you covered. So download my free three-day clean eating meal plan. It has fast recipes, easy and budget-friendly recipes, and it's packed with nutrients that will boost your energy, and it will actually help you to jumpstart your weight loss. So I'm going to put the URL here, and I'm also going to put it in the chat because I know you all cannot click on the banner. So I will put it here too in both of the windows that people are engaging in. So here you go. So definitely download it. Um, it's three days, like I said, and it just, it has some easy, easy recipes and it'll just kind of get you on that bandwagon, kind of set you up for the 4th of July. So this concludes what I have for you today. Thank you for tuning in live. Thank you for listening to the replay. And next week, I'm actually starting a brand new series. We are in July next week. So seventh month, my birthday month. So I'm um, blessed to say that I will enter the 5.0 club on the 25th. So blessings for that. And I'll, I'll speak more on that later. But um, I will start a new series that's called How to Manage Your Social Life Without Gaining Weight. Okay. I mean, things are opening back up. So how do we manage all that without gaining weight? And I will start um, the first week off by how alcohol sabotages our weight loss and how to have your drink and to lose weight too. So that's what we're going to start with. So stay safe, get vaccinated. I'm still wearing my mask. Remain prayerful and have a blessed rest of your day. Bye-bye.